I am so excited to talk to you all. Um, you know, when Archer first started, uh, it was a beloved show that I didn't know where it was going to go. And now, 12 seasons. 12. I mean, that's rarefied air. There's a lot of people out there. I mean, let's not talk about, you know, the law and orders of the world, but let's talk about all the other shows that don't even make it into syndication. They can't even make it into three. So the, the lovely people of uh, Kazakhstan can't enjoy some seasons of shows that only made it to one. But Archer, I'm sure, is 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 live and streaming and available in many of those markets. So uh, I want to uh, first uh, thank you all for joining me. So uh, Chris, Amber, Lucky, uh, you all have, have really just shaped um, this show throughout the years, and I think the one thing I have to I have to ask just to begin as we as we kind of look back at everything is, what's the first thing you remember about how you were sold on Archer? How someone said this is the character, and you we want you to be this person. So was it Adam? Was it Kate? Was it, who who was it that sold you on? That's your agent. Uh, let's start with Chris. Um, I think the way I remember it is a while ago now. Um, I was auditioning for a part for the pilot and um, did not get that. And I figured that was it. I mean, I read, I read the script and thought, oh, this is sharp. This is funny. This is well written. Um, you know, but, you know, it was just for a guest star part. So I didn't, I didn't like really invest that much in thinking about it. And that, I didn't get that part. And then a little while later, I don't know how much later, um, I got you know, the call from my agent that they wanted to offer me the part of Cyril. That's how I remember it. Now it may be completely different than that, but <laughs> I think that's, I think that's generally how it happened. So. And how about, uh, let's go to you, Amber. Oh, for me, somebody was like, do you want a job? And I was like, yes, <laughs> that was literally all the consideration I had to, to have, but it was, um, I remember because we had done Lucky and I had both done uh, Frisky Dingo, so we'd worked with these guys before, and I was like, party. "What is this thing?" And um, so, yeah, I was super excited that I got to do it. And then when Kate came down to Atlanta, and I was like, "Oh, this show is really going somewhere." I think that that was maybe season two when I when I met Kate. But yeah, it's been so much fun. And then finally, Lucky. And by the way, I have to say, Frisky Dingo is out there. You people should watch it. Uh, it is it is definitely the the seedling that grew into the oak tree for sure. So yeah, it is. It's a precursor, certainly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was the same thing as Amber. Like you know, there are buddies. We were we, we work at a theater with some of the animators, and uh, like it was one of those. Hey, you know we're doing this cartoon, and we have the scientist character in it, and he hasn't talked yet, but now he's going to talk. So, uh, will you come in and read? And I was like, Yeah, okay. And then we just recorded a thing, and they gave me the Yeah, you know how this works. Uh, for some reason, if uh, the network doesn't like you, and we go in a different direction, it, it won't be you. And I was like, All right. And then it was me. <laughs> well, uh, one of the things that we are, are very glad of is is the whole cast and how it's come together over the years, too. Um, I think the one thing that we always kind of wonder is, like, where are they going? Like, where uh, where have we been? What are we going to talk about? And that kind of brings me into my next subject here, uh, which is, I, I want to call this the segment, I'm going to call it uh, unarchered prayers, which means yeah. unanswered really? prayers, things that didn't happen, things that that, that, that that we didn't know where it went, but we're here now, so we're happy, so things are good. But there's a chance that, you know, that those things could have been answered. So I think, you know, do you all think about these as you get into the characters, because you do the first year and you don't know what's happening, but after a, a while, it almost seems like you learn more about the question, more about the characters after everyone asks you all the questions about the characters over again. You're like, oh yeah, I guess so. Oh, that does make sense. Okay. Because after a while, you're just not reading the words there anymore, but you know the character, you live within it. Um, so the first one, you know, I, I, I mean, let's start with Lucky. Do you still think about like clones like is that out there in the ether sure. do we are we ever going to talk oh, about the clones instantly. and all that stuff uh well we i mean i i don't write the show of course so i don't know if we are Thank ever God. going to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> it would be so awesome uh i mean like all of it the one thing the one i will say on archered prayer that i do have uh is that when I season seven, I don't when we were at Area 51, Pam and Krieger 
ran into aliens in a hallway and they <laughs> the aliens gave those two characters the secrets of the universe. <laughs> And I would like that to show up at some point. Because <laughs> what does that mean? Right. It's, I mean, so maybe it's just going to be like something's going to find a piece of paper. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, let's let's. I guess we could talk about that or not too. So, uh, you know, moving I'm just forward, thinking it could build a TARDIS or something. Oh, okay. Well, well, that's the thing too. Do we need to start doing some 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 cross? Uh, cross world, cross uh, universe kind of stuff as well. I mean, I think everything's ripe for stealing. <laughs> this is true, and animation does it best, if I can say. Uh, so, as we move into this this thing, uh, this next season, and you know, some more other um, unarchered prayers. Uh, Cyril, of course, has lost his dominating attitude. Um, but uh, is is his sex drive gone? Uh, do you think, Chris? Do you think it's gone? I mean, he used to be the man who was around everywhere, and uh, he was, you know, it was part of his uh, sexual addiction. But now it seems like it's a more of a food porn than anything else. Uh, is that something you think we're kind of moving into with cereal? Like those th uh, those uh, those salad days aren't happening as much anymore. You know, it seems that way, but um, you, you never know what cereal's got going on secretly. You know. You never know what's happening in his life that we don't get to see. So I wouldn't assume that his sex drive is gone. I, I think that doesn't happen too often. Um, and, but clearly he's been comforting himself with food. And uh, it's, it's sad. It's sad that Cyril has uh, lost the sense of confidence that he had when Archer was absent. But maybe he'll get some back. I don't know. I would, I would absolutely love a a, uh, a flashback to see that year, those years, with Cyril becoming this domineering, super uber spy uh, of the world. So that's something that's definitely I, I've seen it, and I've, I've I've seen it on Reddit and a couple other places too. But you can see everything on Reddit these days. So, um, but definitely, I would love to see that. Um, so moving over to Amber and and Pam. Um, you know what? Are you still somewhere a little kernel of you hoping for, you know, the the drift driver slash underground fighter stuff to come up more as well? Because you got deep into some John Wick fighting with tattoos all over the body kind of stuff. Yeah, I think there's always opportunity for that. And if we don't go back and revisit the old ones, there's always new ones around the corner. There is always a dark corner of the world that Pam can fall into and just get crazy for a few hours. So I'm always looking forward to that stuff. That's my favorite thing about Pam. One well, like Amber. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you just keep peeling that onion back. There's so much more to be there. So uh, totally. One of the things that I, I do like to ask animators too is because a lot of this stuff is built on, um, you know, what people, what the fans love, and they try to give it to them. And one of those things is those. Um, those call outs, you know, Danger Zone, Sploosh, Yup, 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 um, GZ Peach. So, are you something you look for to be there, or you're like, okay, we're fading that out? Maybe someone won't yell that to me at the funeral next to me now, you know, or is that still always going to be there? That's always going to be what's going to happen to you. I can only pray it continues to happen for the rest of my life, <laughs> that I retain some form of fan base that's willing to scream a dumb line <laughs> from a show. Uh, I love it. I mean, you know, they're screaming at me at the urinal. That's just going to be weird no matter what. <laughs> or fun. <laughs> that's true. Depends on who it is. Really, it all breaks down to that. I'm human. 100 percent and i yes I, I agree with with the fact that you are human although algernon may not be so that's that's going to yeah, be a, a, a question too really know that i am i i this, might be ai this is true um now you know this is uh, another one i i do want to know and this is a very 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 important one um and this will probably go to chris what do you think they called stir friday before that wasn't working like that was my thing too. It was like, oh, we have stir fry on Friday, so it's stir Friday. What's what was it going to be? That's my question. That was so bad. I think it was a different. Maybe it was a different day of the week. You know, <laughs> it was stir Monday. It just didn't yeah. didn't roll off the tongue as well. Stir Monday. Monday. <laughs> or 
Fajita Thursday. Uh, Fajita yeah, Thursday. I, I was going to say it was a Yaman day when you cooked Jamaican jerk food. Oh. All right. Well, as long as we can keep the puns going, I'm, I'm okay with all I of that mean, for you're sure. All pretty feral. <laughs> 100%. Um, and, uh, you know, the last thing I, I, I in, in this little um, unarchered prayers I'm going to ask is, you know, we went Inception. We went down and we saw these different worlds. If you had your druthers and you had your choice, we had one more coma season down. What theme would you have gone with that you would have liked to have seen Archer in the world go into? Uh, let's start with Amber on this one. I really, really, I've had this question a lot and I've had a lot of time to think about it. I still think the best one is if we had been like Vikings. <laughs> I feel like it would have been so much fun. I would just love to have seen Pam as like a Viking queen. And uh, how about you, Lucky? Uh, Archer babies all the way. <laughs> like Muppet babies, but the Archer gang. <laughs> Hey, we can't afford to pay for those rights. So, call, d d I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm going to say that's probably at least a third off <laughs> of the actual thing. For sure. Uh, and and Chris, uh, and, any thoughts on what that, that next season of uh, theme could have been? Uh, I think like, cave people who can't really <laughs> no, language. Uh, that would have been a good one. You know, uh, Mallory was like the leading Australopithecus or whatever. I don't know. Throw back <laughs> oh, I love your dinosaur knowledge. Australopithecus? Your Jurassic knowledge. Is, are one of your tri children into Jurassic World right now? Is that is that why that came up? Or is this just something you have on, on deck all the time? Uh, I, I have, uh, I guess I have it on deck. I don't know. I, I, I bring it, I throw it out a lot just to make people think I'm intelligent because I ain't, but I try to say big words, convince people what I am. So. Well, brontosaurus also, to you, sir. Yes. It would lend itself to like a great claymation show too. I mean, oh, yeah. Like <laughs> an Australopithecus spy. <laughs> in that world <laughs> in a prehistoric world like saber-toothed crimes and shit it could all be about how homo sapiens ultimately killed all the other yeah. early forms yeah. of humans you know. so uh i guess as we move forward so we'll, we'll, we'll close up on archer prayers of course there's some other stuff out there as well like baby aj and if we're gonna see her again and a bunch of other stuff too mm. um but i do want to kind of uh get your thoughts on this next season without giving too much detail uh, i guess we'll start with uh which one of you knows all the new guest names this season that you can kind of uh, rattle off all the names of the guests we're gonna see none um, i'm excited to see them in the credits i really don't know <laughs> i know i know this knows go ahead chris I have, a, I have a cheat sheet pamela adlon eric andre bruce campbell Hardy gillen Kayvon novak and Stephen Tobolowski, just to name a few. That's grand. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Chris. Um, and as we uh, move forward to this, too, of course, we left last season with them essentially saving the world. So um, I guess, Amber, can you tell us a little bit of how we kind of enter this new season, not, not without giving out too much? We, we pretty much saved the world last time from uh, an insane, rich, you know, Bondian villain. Where do we kind of start up as we kind of come into this new season? Um, I, I actually was lucky enough to, to watch the first episode just yesterday. Oh, wow. it's, it's so, it's great. Ask Christy, she'll let you watch it too. Um, <laughs> It's great because the spy agency is kind of like janky. Like they're running out of money. The phones don't work. They're drinking like scotch out of plastic bottles. Things aren't looking good. And uh, they kind of have to contend with this big spy conglomerate that shows up that's like very shiny and has all kinds of money. And um, it's very funny to see them kind of, you know, put in their place a little bit. They're, they're kind of the old crusty ones on the block and not the, the hot shots that they once were. It's pretty fun to watch. I think I'll I'll be sad if they ever actually update any of their equipment because anything <laughs> outside of anything that Krieger makes, it all looks like 1980s, like working girl, like equipment. Mm -hmm. 
And so yeah. that's that's exactly what I see when I, when I think of their world and everything as well. The only thing that updates itself is the uh, the tech from Krieger and the alcohol, I think, is the only thing that actually gets redone <laughs> in, that, in that whole place as well. Well, I, I you know what? The, this next season is going to be great. Uh, we, we've had so much fun. And actually, I did want to show you one last thing. I showed it to... Um, uh, uh, Judy and Aisha, we actually did some fun with them, and uh, I was trying to find the artist update, so I I apologize to uh, Kristen Lucky. They, she didn't get a chance to update these in time, uh, but we did some gender-bending Archer characters oh, yes. as well. So Go we, we got to see the different versions. So first off here, we're going to start with Amber and Pam. Here is the male version <laughs> of Pam. Brilliant. I love that he, that he is wearing a brooch, too, because brooches are genderless. Yeah, I, I think so as well. I think well said, they. Well said, Amber. <laughs> I kind of feel like we've seen that character somewhere in in the office at some point. But yeah. Uh. Well, then we go to a very slick and styled Lana. Oh. oh. Very attractive. Right. It's she. Uh, she thought he looked like uh, Idris. Is what she thought. She wants to name oh. him. She wants to name Idris. Is what Aisha said. So. Um, <laughs> Then we have Cheryl, and her Cheryl's male counterpart looks a little Cyrilish. Oh. Oh. <laughs> a bit Cyrilish. He's not Cyril nearly as attractive no. as Cheryl. <laughs> uh, yeah, but hilarious. I mean, if that guy were sniffing glue in your office, you would fire him immediately. <laughs> 100%. And then we go to uh, female Archer. Oh. oh, although uh, they both agreed that uh, a female archer would not have a uh, a shirt underneath the jacket, it would be That's it would true. be cleavage town as they said. So, true. cleavage town. Point. Maybe I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You have you have you have thoughts? You have you have questions? Yeah, I mean, concerns? I don't I don't know that that archer would be cleavage town. I I, I think um, I don't know. Maybe on a, on occasions, certainly when enough alcohol is involved but uh yeah i don't know but yeah archer's always pretty buttoned up he's always exactly. you know where it's not like he's That's a true. dresser basically exactly I, I will give you that, and I want to thank uh, Diane Ha, who made those for us. Uh, and we will uh, next time have have uh, uh, one for Lucky and Chris, so we can see the, the female versions of those two as well, for Cyril and, uh, and Krieger, That's too. Man, will, he be, will she be bearded? <laughs> I don't know, so we'll have to see what that what the artist rendering of that context goes to. So yeah, we'll, have to, we'll have to see how we jump over there. Uh, well, you know, this this next season is going to be fantastic. And uh, before I do the wrap up here, I, I do want to uh, mention to the fans too, uh, of course, uh, Jessica uh, is, is going to be missed and is already missed by all of us. Uh, but she will be um, singing with Mallory throughout this season, I guess is the best way to say that. Well, maybe not even the best way, but a way to say that. Um, so fans will get one more season of Mallory, uh, one way or the other. And, and Jessica, uh, she will be there for the laughs, the gripes, and everything else, too. So um, I, I very much look forward to that and everyone getting a chance to live those moments, um, you know, more days on. So. Um, right now, too. Yeah. 100%. Well, um, I do want to thank you all. Uh, this next season, it looks so much fun. We, we have a lot of new stuff. Uh, Archer, of course, is um, limping along. He still has, he's got his tactical cane. Um, and yep. then we have uh, Cyril, who has uh, lost some of that love and feeling because of Archer coming in, unfortunately. Um, Pam, uh, who was always dropping truth bombs, which I love about her. Uh, she is definitely in it for the count. And then uh, Krieger, uh, you know, of course, they are poor so he's just i don't know he's like ramshackling stuff together i don't know if he's going by a specific dump and he's like well short circuit three kind of stuff like he's putting stuff together so yeah, i'm not you know he works with well with whatever he's got yeah right necessity the mother of invention right mm -hmm. right sure, well he could be secretly funding you too though i mean uh, you know that guy's got black market businesses galore <laughs> And, and as he should, although um, it does get pretty dark when he gets into his, um, let's just say, <laughs> genetic stuff, as opposed to his, you know, as opposed to his it's technological really stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll all miss, we'll all miss Piggly out there too. So, <laughs> wherever Piggly is and glowing, so 
for sure. Uh, well, I want to thank all of you. Uh, Chris, of course, uh, always having a good year. It's always a Parnell party because he's just ended Rick and Morty, and now Archer is about to start. Um, and so you are moving along. And then in the future, Dogs in Space, which I'm looking forward to as well. So thank can you tell you. us a, l- a little bit about Dogs in Space, actually? Yeah, it's... um. You know, it's, it's kind of like for seven and up, I think. And so my older son, I and maybe both of my kids can watch it. Um, I play sort of a, a, a little bit of a slimy operator in this crew of dogs that have they've, they've, man, they've learned how to make dogs like much more intelligent. And so they send them out into space to try to find uh, an, another planet for humans to live on. And so these dogs go out there and it's it's kind of their adventures in space and their their struggles and their triumphs and and it's a comedy. I absolutely love that and I want uh, Elon to get on that ASAP. I think that needs to happen. <laughs> and we've got the money, we've got the time, let's make it happen. Uh, moving on to Amber, of course, Amber doing great. Uh, you and Lucky, uh, Dad's Garage, I hope that is going well. I know in a COVID world, events are a little ishy, uh, you know, but um, when it comes down to it, you're doing that. I saw you had a, um, a theater in the parking lot event as well, and so there's some stuff you're doing there. Uh, and then, of course, if they want to catch you, they can also see America, the motion picture on Netflix right now, too. Um, as well as Lucky, you are also in America, uh, the motion picture on netflix so True. anyone who who is caught up on archer already and needs some more uh lucky and amber uh fix if you can't get to the atl definitely go and, and check that out on netflix and then lucky you are also now this is imdb so this could be completely wrong in a world but oh, tell me what am i doing well dark alley is this something you star in this oh. is something you, is this is this an actual yeah, thing i mean our buddy that was a pilot shot several years ago uh, <laughs> that our buddy nick gibbons did i i, so I, it's, I, it's, I don't know how it still has flip phones in it uh, yeah I, I i don't know where that thing lives <laughs> Uh, but that's pretty hilarious that that's on there. That's well, and that's that's why I always preface the IMDb because people are like, yeah. I, I'm not in that. That's I don't not know me. How it, got it, hap- there. it happens so often, and it's very <laughs> weird because we we take that as the truth. Like, and the same way we take a comic book. I do have a comic book coming out on uh, August 25th, which is actually our season 12 launch day, though. Well, so you know. It's called Lester of the Lesser Gods. Eric Powell, uh, who does the goon, uh, it's he and I wrote it. It's very funny. Oh, An artist by the name of Gideon Kendall uh, drew it, and it's gorgeous and really funny. And it's very adult. Very cool. Well, tomorrow is National Comic Book Day, so people can get revved up for this release as well. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And then, Amber, is there anything else you're working on right now that you want to you want to talk about? Are you doing a a, a a anime novel yourself or anything? I don't know. I'm not. Actually, we're gearing up to make a, a super low-budget indie film later this year called How to Ruin the Holidays, and it'll be myself and Colin Mockery will be um, starring with me in the film. So I'm really excited about very it. Cool. Very, very cool. All right. And then, uh, Chris, you know, I kind of threw out some stuff in there. Is there anything else you would like to promote or talk about in your world that's going around? You know, something you learned during code, perhaps? Do you have new skills and talents or something? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about new skills and talents. Um, I just was in Atlanta working on a movie called Senior Year um, that was a lot of fun called uh, Stars Rebel Wilson. Um, and I play her dad. And uh, yeah, that was that was a great time. I got to see Lucky. I did not get, get to see Amber, but I got to see some of the Archer gang. And uh, yeah, that was a blast. And I love Atlanta. So that was mm-hmm. nice. Very, and very Atlanta cool. Atlanta loves Chris. <laughs> as they should. And we also uh, are going to see you as Uncle Stu, correct? In Home Alone as, yeah. as, as well, too. So that's... that's... Not, yeah, I'm, not, I'm in there. I'm in there a little bit. I don't I don't know how much I'll actually make it to the final cut, but I'll, I'll be in there. I'll be in there at some point. So. Well, I think, I think, it'll think be funny. everyone on the internet should make sure to put you top billing for that movie, no matter what, just yeah. because. <laughs> just top bill him all the time. And now it's a it's a Chris Parnell vehicle. And that's what's going to sell it to all the kids in the in yeah. the Midlands across the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but thanks, thanks for trying. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I want to thank you all so much for joining me. Of course, Archer uh, has been uh, has been something that we have loved every season, and it has been through thick and thin space. Uh, we've gone back in time. We've gone through all these different uh, iterations and, and timelines. So I'm so excited we're back to this world. Um, you know, and I, you know, as a 
part of me who lived in the beginning of Frisky Dingo to this too. I love every different part. Like I, I screamed cat party before for Frisky Dingo, uh, which was the ringtone they had. And then uh, you have, you know, phrasing boom and everything else that kind of started with Archer and all those beloved things too. But season 12 looks amazing. Uh, of course, uh, Jessica will be with us in spirit through it. And uh, beyond that, I hope everyone does check in. FXX is the place to be to check this out. And then guess again, Hulu the next day, which they should watch no matter what or jump onto now and catch up by watching all 12 seasons because why not? So I want to thank all of you and I hope you both, uh, you all have an amazing, amazing day and weekend. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Thanks. Thanks. so much fun.